Do you have IT problems in your business that seem to drag on forever? Or are you okay if IT problems are fixed within a day or two? Well, that is a topic for today's video. How quickly should your IT problems be fixed? But as always, before just a quick introduction, my name is Jonathan Edwards. I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. We look after IT support and cybersecurity for small businesses. If you get value from this video, please support me by subscribing to my channel. We all know that IT problems can be incredibly frustrating. You've got that deadline to hit and your email isn't working. Or perhaps you're working from home and the VPN won't connect. Really frustrating. So what do you do? Well, you pick up the phone and call your IT support provider. Then what? What is your realistic expectation as to when your IT problem will be fixed? Well, the answer to this question is simple. The answer lies in something called an SLA, and that stands for Service Level Agreement. So what is a Service Level Agreement? Well, an SLA is a contracted time that your IT provider has to respond to your problems and to resolve them. So how do SLAs work? Well, when you contact your IT provider, they will first assign a priority to your issue. So within my IT company, we've got a few priorities. We've got a critical priority, a high priority, a normal priority, and a priority called request. So what do these priorities mean? So a critical problem would be when your entire business was down. Perhaps the email for your entire business wasn't working. Or perhaps the internet line in your office is down. This is a critical problem. And that means it needs us to jump on it as soon as possible. We've also got a high priority. So what does that mean? Well, that might mean something isn't working for a particular user. Perhaps email isn't working for a single user. So that needs to be dealt with really quickly too. And then we've got our normal SLA. So all the other issues, perhaps questions or small issues, will get assigned the normal SLA. We've also got a request SLA. So if you want to request anything, perhaps you've got a, a new user starting or you want to order a new computer, this will go under our request SLA. It's not an IT issue as such, but it is something that needs doing within your business. Now, each of these priorities will get a specific SLA assigned. So if it's a critical SLA, we guarantee that we respond within a certain time frame. The same is true for the other priorities. Now, this is how a lot of IT companies work. They get a lot of tickets into their business every day and they need a way to categorize them. So they are working on the most important, the most impacting jobs first and foremost. So within SLAs, there is also something called an SLA timer. So what's an SLA timer? So let's look at an example. You're working on a Friday lunchtime. You've got a bit of a deadline to meet and you're trying to send an email, but it just won't send. You're getting a bounce back. So you pick up the phone and you speak to your IT provider. They recognize this as a high priority ticket because you can't use email. So they sign it with a high priority and they are contracted to respond to all high priority tickets for your business within four hours. So that job is in the queue and it's got an SLA of four hours. You then decide you're going to go for a long lunch and your IT provider tries to call your office. Now you're not in at that point. And then you come back to the office a little bit later, you pick up your things and you go on holiday for two weeks. Obviously the issue isn't going to be responded to or resolved within four hours, but that's not really the IT provider's fault. They've tried to contact you a couple of times and they've not been able to get through to you. So that SLA, that four hour SLA will be put on hold and it wouldn't start again, the timer wouldn't start again until you return from holiday. There are also other SLA timers, things like waiting for parts. Pretend that you log an issue because your monitor is flickering. The IT engineer has a look at it and says, you need a new monitor. We're gonna to have to order one from our supplier. The SLA timer will be put on hold as soon as that order is placed because obviously the IT provider, it's out of their hands. They're waiting for the monitor to arrive at your office. And there might be other occasions when your IT provider are waiting for another supplier. So your internet goes down on a Monday morning and BT provides your internet. All the IT provider can do is call BT and escalate it to them. And then everybody's waiting for BT to do their bit. So again, the IT provider can't do anything else. So the SLA will be put on hold. 
So now you know what an SLA is, it's time to look at your SLA you've got with your IT provider. Does it work for your business? I know a lot of people just sign things off when they're taking on suppliers sometimes without looking at the detail. Take for example, you might have a shop and your busiest day is a Saturday. But your SLA might say that you only get business hour support from Monday to Friday, eight till six. That doesn't suit your business. And what about if your business uses a specific application and it's critical to whatever you do? Without it, you can't make money. It's important to wrap the SLA around that so you know and your IT provider knows that when you've got an issue with it, they will mark it as critical and they'll respond almost immediately. So there you have it. There is a quick summary on service level agreements. Now SLAs are really important to make sure that you're getting the best support for your business from your IT support provider. Having said that, I have worked in IT for over 20 years and from my point of view, nothing beats communication and setting customer expectations. That works in any industry. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you again soon.